How's it going, Reef Keepers? I figured today I would make a video about uh, maintaining flow in a mixed reef tank that is actually, you know, enough flow or the proper flow to sustain both like everything from Acropora SPS all the way down to, um, you know, more delicate SPS corals that don't love a lot of flow like an elegance coral. So um, as you can see, I have acros in the tank. These are flagging because they have a pest that I'm taking care of. You guys will know if you've watched recent videos, um, but these acros here on the rocks, let me zoom in. You can see decent polyp extension right now. The lights just ramped up to full. Um, but yeah, I mean, they are, uh, they're coming out and they're, you know, plenty happy. So, um, and you can see, of course, the SPS is all enlarged, puffed up, you know, waving in the current, happy. So the way, and again, this is like, this is six years of me tinkering with flow that has brought me to this point. And, you know, my, my theories on reef keeping are always in flux. But right now, you know, this has seemed to be working since I have ventured into Acropora. Um, so I'm keeping it for the time being. And by the way, I'm sure this is not the only way to do this. By no means am I saying like, this is it. This is the end all be all. It's, I mean, every, I mean, there are tanks that this flow wouldn't suit because they're squares, for instance, or because they're, you've got a low boy tank and, you know, it's not very tall. So take it all with a grain of salt, but here's what I've been doing. So first things first, just so you know, this pump right up here in the back is just a tunes pump that's connected to a uh, backup battery. And it it is just angled straight upwards to create, to break the surface, to create surface tension, to oxygenate the water in the event that I had a power outage in my, my small city. Um, so if that were to happen, that pump would just keep going and it would keep a general flow and it would also, you know, keep the tank oxygenated for a few hours. So um, kind of ignore that one. What I want you to more focus on are my Neros. So I have a Nero 5 here up in a really high position and I have a Nero 5 on the other side of the overflow box. Let me go around the tank and show you. And that one is, you know, not, it's above the halfway point for sure. It would be higher if I didn't have to fit that emergency pump back there. And then on this side of the tank, I have a Nero 7 right there. Um, so that Nero 7 is kind of the, the main driver. That's why it's on the far end uh, away from the overflow. And I have a peninsula style tank for what it's worth. So again, like, you know, tall tanks, you know, four foot, five foot tanks, I guess this would probably apply to. And then um, um, the tanks that are peninsula style, this flow is going to work better. Uh, but I still think some of the principles apply no matter what. So what I have done, I'll say this, I'll start out where I started with flow in this tank. So where I started with flow in this tank, you know, when I first set it up was I had this pump down about the midway point. I had this pump down around the midway point and I had that Nero on the other side down real low. My thinking being the Nero down low on that side will, you know, keep things moving down low in the tank. This one would keep things moving across the center. And then this one right here, I had kind of shooting across the very top of the rock scape, you know, cause I wanted to put SPS coral up there. And what I found was that was just too much for the LPS coral. It was too much for the elegance. It was too much for the Duncans. Um, you know, my, uh, my blastos were not fully engorged. Um, it was just too, it was too much flow at direct angles all across the tank. So I began to tinker and what I eventually landed on was placing the pumps all higher up, right? I moved everything higher. I then, if you look closely, these pumps are angled because you can angle Nero pumps. Uh, the fish won't get out of the way, I can't focus on it, but uh, the pumps are slightly angled up. So at it, you know, rather than flat, they're angled up like this. And this one is also angled slightly up, right? Uh, and I also angled these Nero's on this side slightly inward. And what that creates is three streams of water. And I'm running all these Nero's at, uh, what's my range? I'm running them at maximum randomness and I'm running them uh, at 55 to 65%. So they're constantly ramping between 55 and 65%. And they ramp 
down to 45 to 55% at night, just so the fish aren't, you know, while they're trying to sleep, they're not getting blown around. The fox face kind of sleeps in the open. I don't want her blowing into the walls and stuff. Um, but during the day, 55 to 65% maximum randomness. And how I have them angled means that in the center point of the tank, which is roughly where most of my acros will eventually end up, that is a point where all these streams of water are hitting one another and they are creating turbulence, right? Which is what acros love. They have crazy random turbulent water flow on the reef. And I have found that, you know, I get good polyp extension on my, my two little acros here in the center, really good polyp extension, you know, after the lights have ramped up, you know, more than they are now, um, every single day. So they clearly are enjoying this flow pattern. Now, the reason I angle the pumps, you know, slightly upwards, not far upwards, I still want part of the cone that's coming off of them. The bottom part of the cone needs to sweep those acros. But I angle them all slightly up so that none of them are like, you know, blowing straight across the LPS. I've got enough flow running all these pumps fairly high and running them all so they meet one another in the center. Um, I have enough flow in the tank that the residual flow down low is plenty to keep the LPS happy, right? And actually now is a terrible time for me to even be showing it because the fish are getting fed, so you get to enjoy that. But the flow is actually ramped down to 1% for 10 minutes while the feeding happens. And sorry about the Apex Auto Feeder. Man, I hope they come out with a new model. It's so loud. Um, all right, now that that's over, sorry about that. Um, but right now, everything is pretty still, right? When I began the video, um, it was normal flow. Now everything is ramped way down. So this is not a you know good characterization of the flow. It does offer a cool look at the corals when they're not moving all over the place and they're kind of at a standstill. But um, hopefully, you know, walking you through that, you kind of see my, you know, my approach to it, my theory behind it, right? So all pumps kind of meeting in a high center point in the tank and nothing really receiving direct flow. And even if like the bottom of the cone from, you know, this big Nero seven is sweeping the SPS on top, you know, they're not right in front of the pump getting battered all day. And because all those streams kind of have to travel a long distance to get to the middle, they're creating a lot of turbulence and a lot of randomized flow, but none of it is just like brutally battering the uh, Acropora. So if you've got a mixed reef tank and you've got some, you know, more delicate Acropora that you're just getting into, but you're trying to keep all this LPS coral that you started out with also happy in the tank, mixed reef tank is just hard. It's just hard, hard. You have to experiment and experiment with flow and you have to be patient with it. It's not like you can change flow. And in, you know, a couple of days, you're going to know for sure if this is the right flow pattern. You got to keep it on for a couple weeks and really kind of check in every day and see how things are going and then tweak it and then check in for a couple weeks and then tweak it. It's a, it's a process. So I urge people just moving into like, you know, higher end SPS and going, going mixed reef, just take your time. You know, um, I've never had a coral like just die because it didn't love the flow, but you know, give it a week or two, like let things settle in and see how things go and then tweak from there. Um, but yeah, I have found this methodology to be to be pretty sound for me so far. So, no changes, uh, no changes on the horizon for me flow wise because this is having so much success currently. So, all right, guys, just figured I'd throw in my two cents on that conversation. It's a uh, it's a big conversation, but that's what I'm doing. So, hope you guys have a good one.